In digital technologies, data automation is any process of transforming and manipulating data that does not require a person to cause it to happen. For example, through the use of formulas in a spreadsheet, new sets of data can be processed and the results recalculated automatically. Or a webcam can be turned on as a result of movement detected by a sensor input. Many applications of digital technologies involve the automation and transformation of data into information. But to do so, students need to understand data at a fundamental level. Digital data is an abstraction of information using number codes. Data may include characters, for example, alphabetic letters, numbers and symbols that you would find on a keyboard. But it can also include images, sounds, video and instructions. And when data is represented by number codes, it can then be easily changed, stored and communicated by digital systems. For example, letter characters may be represented using a coding system called ASCII. Or images may be represented by a bitmap of numbers, each representing a dot or pixel in the image. A more familiar example to the pre-compact disc generation would be phonograph records. These represented data in a non-digital or analog form and the raised or lowered grooves on a record encoded different sounds. The advantage of CDs was in representing music in a digital form. It then took up much less space, so more songs could be stored, did not degrade as quickly over time as grooves wore out, and more detail of the audio signal could be stored, resulting in higher quality recordings. But it could also now be easily copied without a loss in quality between each recording. And these recordings could be more easily shared, resulting in a major disruption to the music industry. Which happened again with the advent of the internet, allowing digital recordings to be shared even more easily. And we have seen similar disruptions as a result of data becoming digital in the advent of digital cameras, movies, and more recently, digital books. Once data has been digitized, it can then be stored and shared. Unlike every other product, this can occur at any scale with no increased cost. This is the major advantage of digital solutions. They can be easily distributed and as we discussed in abstraction, can be generalized and easily turned into new solutions. Sometimes the solutions we were not even aware that we had a need for, such as the advent of personal computers, MP3 players, or smartphones. Large quantities of data, however, are more efficiently stored from what is known as a data repository or server. And sometimes you hear this being referred to as cloud computing. For example, each ATM machine does not hold your banking details. When needed, this data is accessed from a central data repository. Likewise, when you search Google, the information presented is not contained on your computer, as it once may have been with an encyclopedia CD. It is fetched from a data repository located overseas via the internet. Google stores approximately 15 exabytes of data about 30 million times more than would fit on your computer. But this isn't the internet. Google simply stores tables of web addresses and indexes these by keywords. When you search Google, it uses an algorithm. We'll discuss that next. And this matches your search word using these tables and sends you out a list of associated web addresses. On a smaller scale, this is known as a database, where data is organized by records and fields that can be easily stored, accessed, managed and updated. Each piece of data to be stored is represented by a field, for example a song title or song artist, bank account number, or date of transaction, and data in the fields 
In our example might be a song or a banking transaction are called records. The spreadsheet that you used in module 2 is an example of a simple database with the fields being the columns and the records the values in the cells in the spreadsheet. More complex databases establish relationships between these fields and this enables more detailed searching of the database to provide specific information. And these searches are defined in their own form of programming language known as a query. The difference between query-based searches and what you are used to with Google searches is that queries return very specific records of information, such as your individual bank account details. Something you want an exact value for, not a list of related terms. Queries, because they are exact, can be used for complex calculations, such as how many students scored between 80 and 90 percent on a maths test, and also study geography. The power of automating and the sharing of data has driven innovation with digital technologies. Most new apps, games and technologies involve making access to information easier and presenting it in, in useful and in engaging ways. In most cases, this sharing started with a simple idea. Providing pictures of fellow students and being able to leave comments on them. This resulted in Facebook. Searching a list of keywords linked to useful websites became Google. Sharing photos with others, Instagram. Superimposing images of Pokemon on the camera displays of a mobile device based on their GPS coordinates of the device and giving points if a button is pressed became Pokemon Go. All simple ideas achieved through computational thinking and all within the imaginative capabilities of our students.